and welcome to my lecture. We're going to talk about photographing and viewing the beautiful sun. I love this topic and I'm glad you could join me. These are solar viewing glasses and they are available for free on the table. You're welcome to them. If you're a teacher, let me know. I could be able to supply a pack or two. Put these on. Look at the sun. I see a white pale disc, completely black all around and there's a very tiny sunspot on the lower edge. These glasses are safe for solar viewing full time from forever really. They don't wear out. As long as you don't punch a hole in them, they're fine. These glasses can be used to put over digital cameras or over uh, cell phones. We'll get into that in the next portion. But this is how you view with your eyes. This is what the sun looks like through a standard high def video camera. As you can see, it's pretty bright. But still, when there's clouds passing by, or any kind of aircraft, or any motion around it, or even just by itself on a clear blue day, to me this is an absolutely beautiful photograph. And this is something that is fairly easy to do. Should not damage the camera as long as you don't do it all day long. And you can get a good image of the sun like this. This is a Canon point shoot digital camera showing the same image. Now, if I can get it situated just right. Okay, getting dizzy, sorry. Take the photograph. And you end up with that as your photograph. Now that's pretty cool to me. Let's look at that in the uh, that's a pretty cool photograph. Now using the Canon camera, sorry about that, hiya, using the uh, Canon digital camera is very simple. The uh, camera usually stays on the auto settings. You can change around the sepia tone or make different effects with it, but basically it's going to use the automatic settings because it's a point and shoot. It's safe to take a picture of the sun with this. Uh, don't look through a viewfinder. Don't look through any magnification device of the sun because it will hurt. Well, it won't hurt. You won't feel a thing, but it will destroy your eyesight. Using the review screen on the back of a camera is perfectly fine. You can also put the solar glasses over the camera if you'd like. This is kind of a hokey setup, but it's pretty cool and it's an artistic way to capture the sun. We'll get into that next. Okay, here we go on a very windy and very cold day. We're going to put the glasses over the digital camera like so. Aim it at the sun and hope for the best. Zoom in a little bit. Take a photograph. I got a really nice photograph of the sun as a yellowish orb with a bright aura around it. And you can do a lot with these photographs. I'll show it to you on the next slide. All right, now we're going to talk about using a DSLR. Uh, basically, I don't feel real comfortable shining a $4,000 Canon camera at the sun. However, this is uh, on the lowest ISO possible and the shortest shutter release possible. And I'm just using a manual, or a, uh, excuse me, a wired shutter release. So, take a couple of images, turn off the stabilizer, give it a shot. Alright, so that's that. This is a Canon 7D DSLR camera using a 28 millimeter wide angle lens. It's pointed at the sun. I don't feel very comfortable leaving it pointed at the sun very long. However, I have taken thousands of photographs of the sun using this camera, both in a time lapse environment and a single shot environment. So, <clears throat> this is a cable release, and I've just taken several photos of the sun. And they look pretty cool. And you can get home if you use the raw format, edit these several different ways. It also looks good at sunrise or sunset. So you can get the sun and the landscape at the same time. That makes for a really nice photo. Sometimes the autofocus works if you have something to focus on. But if it's just the sun and the sky, generally the autofocus just will not focus. There you go. 
So we'll look at these photos on the next slide. All right, now we're going to talk about time lapse. Several cameras have time lapse, especially Nokia, have time lapse built into the operating system. Uh, Canon cameras do not generally DSLRs. You have to buy an additional item. Of course, it's Canon, and it's called an intervalometer. The intervalometer, it's a mouthful, is a device which lets you take successive images timed. Uh, with in between them or a number of certain images of a certain exposure or a continuous uh, long duration exposure time after time after time thousands of uses for this thing you can go from one second intervals to 99 hours 90 and 59 second intervals um, it's pretty handy you can take a lot of really cool movies with this and what you do is you set your interval you point it generally I like to use a wide field lens because I want to get the sunset and watch uh, things fly by, birds, etc. Uh, it makes a, a really nice image. What you do is you start it with, the, say, a three second interval, point it in a wide field as you can get with the sun in there, press start, and it starts taking pictures every three seconds. Let me turn the camera this way. Okay. You can hear that it's taking a shot every three seconds. This really soaks the battery life up, so it's a good idea. I'm going to stop it real quick. It's a good idea to turn off your live display and also if you have a mode on your camera that does not use a flash but everything else is automatic that's the best way to do it because the changing light is significant during sunsets or sunrises you want to have the camera automatically adjust the ISO and the exposure so that your image looks the best turn off the preview and let the camera go on its own with automatic settings just make sure the flash is disabled you don't want to flash in your time-lapse photography you have to have a pretty big CF card or a memory card for whatever time you're using your camera I let this run for four to six hours shooting a exposure every three seconds and then you go and take those exposures and the camera will number them successively already numbered exposures off the CF card and you can just run it from the CF card to your Mac or PC. And then I like to use QuickTime to assemble my movies. There's dozens of choices for products. But in QuickTime Pro, you follow me and it says open the image sequence. Then you point to where the first image is. It opens the image sequence in the number in alphabetical order. Is based on how your camera records it. And you tell it how many seconds per frame, how many frames per second. I like to do about 12 frames per second. And you end up with an absolutely beautiful time lapse, especially if you're in Hawaii, like the one I'm going to show you next. But even around the house, if you have a farm or in the city, it doesn't matter where you are, sunset is gorgeous. Okay, now we're going to talk about a little more advanced method using uh, hydrogen alpha narrowband telescope and a couple of different computers. Here we go. Sorry about the shake. Now this is an Astrophysics Mach 1 GTO mount. Oops, sorry. There's a Coronado 90 millimeter refractor on here that's got two etalons, which are filters that reject all the wavelengths except for the one you want, which in this case is the hydrogen alpha emission line. What I have connected to it is a point gray research Scorpion camera which takes high speed, high res images of the sun. This is based or designed for a Mac platform. Now of course it's really bright out here so you can't see anything. That's what the handy cloth is for. You throw it over, get down in here and all of a sudden we have an image of the sun. Okay, now I've already done all this, and I'm going to go over this more on the next slide. Let me go ahead and stop the recording. Isn't this uh, quality awesome? Just a moment. Stop record. Okay, as you can see, sort of, <laughs> focus is essential. If you have a computer set up with a camera connected, it is really important that you get 
close enough so that you can reach out and focus the telescope like so with your hand while you're looking at the screen because focusing in this setup is difficult. This is pretty well focused and I've recorded a .mov file of a thousand frames of the sun in hydrogen alpha and we're going to process this in just a minute. Alright, welcome back. What this is, is a little more advanced setup. This is a Coronado 90mm double stacked hydrogen alpha scope. I'll explain that during the presentation. Using a Mach 1 astrophysics mount for tracking the sun through the sky. And you don't have to have a, a super fancy tracking mount. Uh, you don't even have to have a tracking mount. A tripod will be fine. It works a lot better if you have some tracking equipment and some high tech stuff. Of course, the more money you throw at it, the better your images are going to be, as you may have guessed. What we have here is two computer systems set up. One is a PC, and the other is a PowerBook G4. And down here you can see there's two different cameras. The one on the right is a imaging source DMK41. Very popular camera for solar work. This is a Point Grey Research Scorpion camera, also very popular for the Mac users. What you do is you take these cameras and you put them into the telescope in place of the eyepiece. As you can see, they're connected via USB to your computer and they deliver a high speed, very high resolution image. Generally you want to image in black and white with the sun. So once you get it all set up, and I'll talk about this in the presentation, as you can see we're looking at the sun. There it is. And we come back down, it's fed through the USB cable into the computer. This is a viewing screen because you're blind out here. You can't see a laptop screen. There's the Mac laptop and it's fully functioning and running. Okay, I can't even see any of the icons. So we use one of these shields so we can look at it. And I'll stick the camera inside the shield and you can see there's some software and there's the image that's being presented. Let me zoom in. There's a nice sunspot right there. And over here is some recording dialogue. I'll try to get the mouse up there so I can see that. Anyway, you press, hold on just a moment. There we go. I had to find the mouse. You're really blind in the daytime. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to press record. And what it's going to do is record a thousand frames of this image. And then when I get home, I'll put it in some other software called Registax, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this is what the raw data looks like through the camera. You get the same result with a Mac or a PC, you just have to use different hardware. All the stuff on the PC is basically free software, and all the stuff on the Mac is expensive. However, we'll get back to more of this in the lecture. And remember, it's all for the beauty of the sun. Okay, so as you can see, there's several different ways to image the sun, from the glasses, the point and shoot, the iPhone, to $15,000 worth of solar equipment. The main point is, appreciate the beauty of this star. It's near to us, it's absolutely beautiful, and there's about a million different ways you can appreciate it, both imaging-wise, sketching-wise, and also just with your eyes. I'm glad you got a chance to listen to the lecture. Now I'm going to go back and check out the sunspots and flares today. See ya.